Morning, family. I thank you again for joining us as we prepare to share with you what God has given to us. I pray that our praise and worship blessed you the same way that it blessed me for once again, I needed to hear from God. I want you to know, regardless of what's going on in our nation, we are continually praying with you and praying for you. We want you to know, family, that while we are out of the building, the church is still open. So anytime you need to reach out, you need someone to pray with you, you need someone to talk to, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can, you can give us a call. You can even come by the church. Uh, we're here on Mondays and Tuesdays as well as Thursdays. And uh, I'd love to have you come and just kind of share with me your, the heart uh, of what God is doing in your lives. Uh, you can also call. Give us a, give us a call. We, you can go to our website, www.newhopeclute.church. And again, love to hear from you. Well, family, on today, there is a word from, from the Lord. And I don't know about you, but I am so excited when God shares with me his word and when he reassures me through his word that he is still with me. And through all of the times in which we're dealing with, through all of the issues that, that are challenging our nation and our world as a whole, it is good to know that God is still on the throne. Amen? Amen. Well, family, if, if you will turn with me to the gospel according to Matthew, that's the first gospel in the New Testament, Matthew. We're going to be in chapter 14, and we're going to be reading verses 28 through 31, but our focus is going to be on uh, verse 30. Again, Matthew chapter 14, verses 28 through 31. And I'm going to initially read it out of the New International Version, and then I'm going to read verse 30 out of the Messenger translation. So uh, why don't you join with me? It says, Peter said to him, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. And Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. Verse 30, but seeing the wind, he became frightened and began and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and took hold of him. And said to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? 
The 30th verse in the messenger uh, translation, it reads, but when he looked down at the waves churning beneath his feet, he lost his nerve and started to sink. And he cried, Master, save me. And just for a few moments, family, I want to utilize as our topic of discussion on today, watch out for the distractions. Repeat that with me. Watch out for the distractions. If you will bow with me. Father in heaven, we thank you again for another blessed opportunity to come together. I pray now, Father, that you would move me out of the way. Speak to your people, Father. You teach, you preach, but most of all, Father, you save. I pray now in the name of Jesus that you would move in the hearts of your people, Father. Allow them, Father, to see you in any and all of their circumstances, knowing, Father, that you, you said that you would never leave us, nor would you ever forsake us. Now, Father, I pray for those that are struggling right now, going through health challenges, financial challenges, job challenges, family, relational challenges, whatever it may be. Father, I pray now that as only you can, that you would come in, give them a peace, knowing, Father, that all things will work together for the good of them who love you and are called according to your purpose. And Father, I also pray now in the name of Jesus for those that have yet to accept you as their personal Lord and Savior. Let something be said today, Father, that would convict them to give their hearts to you. Lord, we thank you. We love you. And most of all, Father, we do praise your name. It's in Jesus' name we do pray and we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Well, family, watch out for the distractions. Let me help you out, help, help you focus a little bit on where we're going on today. Let me, let me give you a scenario that I'd like for you to consider on today. Think about it. You just left the doctor's office and was given a list of food to avoid. It's now Thanksgiving. We're coming up on Thanksgiving and, and, and you go to, to the family dinner only to discover that the entire list of what the doctor gave you was on the menu. You know you shouldn't eat, but, but you know you shouldn't eat it, but, but, but you're enjoying the day with your family. There's, and, and it's something that you don't get to do, especially in 2020. You haven't been able to spend a lot of time with your family and your friends. A day that, that you can spend with your loved ones who you don't get to see every day. And so with this in mind, you, you go ahead and, and you go against the doctor's directions. Later, you go back to the doctor's office. You go back to the doctor's office as you follow up and, 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 and you have to tell him or you have to tell her what, what you did and, and the doctor admonishes you for not doing what was instructed and, and, and causing a delay in your treatment. Let me ask you a question. Do you know why this happened? This happened because you were distracted. Stay with me. And family, during this time of national upheaval, we're, we're, we're being bombarded with, with, with negative TV ads. We're being bombarded with news channels that are continually giving us their take on what's happening within our country and within our government. We, we've been listening to many individuals discussing COVID-19. We've been listening to many individuals discuss race issues within our country, politics, so forth and so on. And it can be somewhat overwhelming. Am I right about it? Well, some, if not most of the information that we've been given is to distract us from what God would have us to do as believers in Christ. And that is to trust God with absolutely every aspect of our lives. Then you find yourselves in compromising positions. And do you know why? Yeah. Yeah. Because we've been distracted. Think about it. You now wake up on Sunday morning in 2020 and you turn on YouTube or, or Facebook or, or go to the church's website for, for church service. And, and instead of you being blessed and listening to the message, 
You lose focus because you're listening to what other folk are saying in the house. You, you're worried about what they're eating or, or even if they've gotten out of the bed and, and, and are going to come and attend service with you in front of the computer. And, and the moment that you focus on them, you miss out on what the preacher has prepared to share. Later on, you turn off the church service after hearing the word hearing some praise and worship, saying to yourself what a good service it was. And, 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 and the question is, you did get something out of it, but watch this. You can't exactly say what you got out of it. And do you know why? Once again, because you've been distracted. Well, family, have you ever considered just how big a menace distractions are? in our lives. Family, distractions have caused people to lose their jobs. Distractions have strained relationships. Distractions have even caused divorces. Distractions can cause issues in our lives. And when we are distracted, family, we are here, but we're really not here. You see, nowadays, there are so many of us caught up staring at our iPads and computers and, and our smartphones, checking our emails, our Facebook accounts, our Instagram accounts, our Twitter accounts. And as one of, our, as one of my favorite musical artists have said, the great OJs, your body is here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. And we're absent from the now. And we're absent because we've been distracted. Well, family, how often have we read those horrible and heart-drenching accounts of in the news about a child being injured or often fatally because his or her parents was, was focusing on something else rather than their child, even if it but be for a brief moment? How often have we heard of someone texting while driving, reading their emails while driving, or putting on makeup while driving and was involved in a fatal accident? And why did this happen? It happened because we were distracted. Yes, family, distractions can be deadly. And as we are dealing with COVID-19 and, and the horrible effects that it, it's caused, we're, we're facing the fear of losing a job in a shaky economy. We're, 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 we're faced with the threat of illness or the haunting fear of death and, and the uncertainty of life. And, and all too often we allow these life distractions to succeed in taking our eyes off of Jesus to the point that we become just like Peter in our text. His faith faltered and he almost drowned. And the reason is because he became distracted. Yes, distraction family can be deadly. Distraction can cause some serious issues in our lives. Well, family, I'm going to share with you three points that I have and I'm going to be done for today. But there are three reasons why I believe that Peter's faith faltered. And the first reason is he glanced at the storm. It's right here in the text family. Just after feeding of the 5,000, Jesus sent the disciples away in a boat to the other side of the Sea of Galilee because he wanted some time alone for prayer and for rest. And while Jesus was on the mountain, the disciples were already a good distance out in the sea and because, because of the strong wind and then the waves that pushed the boat. And if you don't mind, if I can just paint a clear picture for you, the boat, it says, was tossed so ferociously until they felt pain and, and they felt anguish. And to top all of, this, of it off, the storm came while the disciples were working. Watch this. And see, the, in other words, the storm came while they were doing exactly what Jesus told them to do. Wow. Here's an aha moment for some of us. So, Pastor, you're saying that this storm came while they were doing what Jesus told them 
to do. Well, yes, I am, family, because I need for us to understand, even as believers in Christ, I don't care if you're a super saint. I don't care if you've been in the in the church all your life. I don't care if you just joined the church. Let me share with you something that you may or you may not understand. You may not like it, but storms are impartial. They are not selective. No, no. See, they come to the rich. They come to the poor. They come to men. They come to women. They come to the black as well as they come to white. And the storms don't care whether or not you're doing what you're called to do. They just come. So let me help. Let me help somebody else out here. It doesn't. You need to understand that just because storms come your way and you and you living for Christ, and then storm doesn't seem to be coming the way of others, and they seemingly don't care about Christ. That's not the point here. The point is, is that whoever you are. Whatever you're doing in life, you can be the pastor preacher, you can be the Sunday school teacher, you can be the deacon, you can be the missionary, you can be the evangelist. Whatever you're doing for Christ, understand this, storms can and will come your way. See, the Bible says that all of a sudden they saw someone in the midst of this storm walking toward them across the way. And see, they saw someone who was actually walking on the water. And quite understandably, family, they were frightened. They were scared. They didn't know what they were seeing. They didn't know if they were seeing a ghost. They didn't know what was going on. All they knew is that they saw someone walking in the midst of the storm on the water. Well, family... Maybe it was because they were already physically exhausted. Maybe because they had been struggling against the storm for hours. I don't know. Their lives had been threatened and they were struggling to survive. I don't know what was going on, but I do know kind of like what's happening with you and I today. We've been going up and down in our political uh, stream. We've, we've been going up and down as it relates to our finances. We've been going up and down as it relates to this COVID. We've been up and down about race relations. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired. And as a whole lot of folk that I've talked to, they're tired and in the midst of their, of, of their being tired, in the midst of the exhaustion, here comes Jesus walking towards them. And the, see, the storms of life, family, has a way of making us struggle and, and leaving us mentally drained. And the storms of life has a way of overwhelming us. But now here's a thought that I need for us to understand before I move on. Most of us know that life is full of difficulties. Most of us know that life can be full of distractions. And if we know that life is full of difficulties, and if we know that life is full of distractions, why are we sometimes almost overwhelmed by them? And I believe, just like Peter and those that were on that boat, I believe that it's because we've become exhausted. We become tired with what's going on in our lives. Seems like you just made it over one hurdle and here comes something else. You got to jump another. It's just it seems like when you get one bill paid, here comes another bill. When it's when it seems like you finally got a little food to put on the table, here comes another mouth. It seems like when you finally got one tire fixed, you need two more tires. When you finally got the car running, it seems like here's another issue. It's always something else. And you just become tired. Ah. But watch this. Let me help you out because in our text. It says all of a sudden out of the clear blue sky, they saw what they thought was a ghost. They were frightened and they were on the brink of total shock. It could have been a deaf angel as far as they were concerned. They didn't know because the storm had them believing that this was an abs this was absolutely their last day on earth. And some of you can identify with, with that particular sentiment. You've been going through for so long, some of you just waiting for the death angel to call. Some of you have been going through so long, you don't think that good is going to ever come back into your life. You've been going through so long that you don't trust anybody, you don't believe in it, you don't believe in anybody anymore your faith has been 
torn. You're ready to give up on life. And that's how you are feeling. And that's how Peter and them were feeling. They were feeling as if, listen, man, I fought this waves. I fought this storm. I'm tired. I'm ready to die. But listen to me real closely, family. During this, during this horrible but brief moment in their lives, Jesus was not even being considered by them. Wow. Let me say that again. During this horrible moment, not one time did they think about Jesus. After all that Jesus had brought them through, they didn't think about Jesus. After all that they seen that Jesus could do, they didn't think about Jesus. So what are you trying to say, Pastor? Well, I'm glad some of you asked. See, see, we shouldn't turn back when our storms come. It doesn't matter how terrible the storm is because Jesus Christ is able to take the trials of life and make opportunities out of them. I got some witnesses out there today. I know I do. When you thought that you were down to your last dime, then came Jesus. When you thought that when the doctors had said there was nothing else that can be done, here come Jesus. When you thought that they were going to lay you off, but they said, no, not your department, here come Jesus. When you thought that your relationship was over, watch out, here comes Jesus. That's how he works. But while we're going through, just like Peter, oftentimes we don't call on the name of Jesus. Oftentimes we don't even think about Jesus until it's gotten to a point that there's nothing else we can do. We've done the best that we can. We've borrowed as much money that we can borrow. We've talked off as many ears as we can talk off. We've done everything except call on the name of the Lord. About family, the Bible says, in the midst of all of their storms, all of a sudden a voice, <laughs> yeah, a familiar voice shouted out, it is I, don't be afraid. And I don't know about you, but those are wonderful words, words that we ourselves, family, want to hear on a daily basis, especially during this year of 2020. Words that, that give you the reassurance of his presence in our lives. Words that are being expressed by him to us right now. But unfortunately, many of us re either refuse or just cannot hear these words coming from our Lord. And the question is, why? Why aren't you hearing Jesus calling you and letting you know, here I am? Why is it that you're not acknowledging the fact that even in the midst of your storm, here is Jesus. Why are you not able to admit that? Well, let me help somebody out. Because I believe that because we are distracted by the storms of our lives, and for a few of us, or, 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 or of us at least, Jesus is not even being considered. We become so distracted by what's going on in, in Washington. We become so distracted by what's going on in Austin. We become so distracted by what's going on with uh, all around the nation with our racial uh, reconciliation. We've been distracted by everything that's going on in our nation. We've been distracted from everything and, and we haven't even considered Jesus. However, in our text family, Jesus gave his assurance of his presence in the midst of the storm and it was of a great encouragement to his disciples. Now, let me help somebody because see, here's a shout, y'all. See, here, here's a shout. This is what this and this is what Jesus is telling us through this text today. See, whatever you're going through today, watch it now. Whatever you're going through today, Jesus is still giving the assurance of his presence in the midst of your storm. And as soon as you take your eyes off of the storm, you'll be able to see his presence for yourself. Ah, see, somebody should have shot it right there. And see, some of you, you don't, you don't understand. See, you worried about money? Jesus done already worked it out. You, you, you worried about that job? Jesus done already worked it out. You, are, you worried about whether you're going to be able to pay this bill or that bill? Watch out. Jesus has already worked it out. He just wants you to stop looking at the distraction and keep your focus on him. But as long as your glance is on the storm, 
as long as all you see are your issues, as long as all you see are the ways, you'll run the risk of overemphasizing the situation. Oh, see, some of us, we good at that. Yes, we are. We good at that. All we can see is what's right here. What's right here in front of us. That's all we can see. And the, and the funny thing is, I don't care how small it is, the, the closer you bring it up to your face, the larger it becomes. In other words, the more you focus on it, the larger it becomes. And the more and the more the, the larger it gets, the worse the problem gets. The larger it becomes, the more it begins to overtake your life. And let me share something with you. God is just saying, listen, I know your storms can be big. I know your trials can be challenging. But if you stop long enough to move the storm away from your focal and just look at what God not only has done, but look at what God is doing then that would make your storms just that much smaller. And this is exactly why Peter's faith faltered, because he overemphasized the situations. See, even though the disciples were encouraged, they, were, they still were not quite sure. See, some of us are like that. See, we're greatly encouraged when we hear a word from, from the Lord on Sunday mornings, but, but as soon as we leave the church, as soon as we get up from our computers, we get a sense of not being too sure. We, we know what the preacher said was correct. We know that what he said was from the word of God, but we think that it just doesn't apply to our lives. Oh, family, how often do we forget that true worship really begins after the benediction? Yes, it does. See, after the benediction, when we leave the church building, after the benediction, when we stand up from our computers and, and prepare to go for a few more rounds with the devil, see, that's when it's time to take what God said and use it. But see, we feel good as long as we're being moved by, by, by the word. We, we, we feel good as long as we're being moved by the praise and worship. But as soon as the word is over, as soon as the praise and worship is over, then we come back to reality. And we begin to sing that song, back to life, back to reality. Well, see, God is saying, look here, let me tell you something with you. Your reality is not in your circumstances. Your reality is not in your trials. Your, your reality is in God himself. Your reality is in me. And if you just hold on, if you just look away from your troubles, look away from your trials, God is saying you will finally find me. But you know, some of us are just like Peter. See, Peter, at the moment in this particular text, he was more interested in being saved from death than being saved. Oh, that, 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 that should have hit somebody. Let me help somebody with that one more time. See, just like us, just like you and me, Peter was, at that moment, was more interested in being saved from death than from being saved. Peter knew that Jesus had the power to save, to save him, but he... Instead of being worried, instead of being concerned about his heart salvation, he was more concerned about his physical. And that's what a whole lot of you and I, we do. Yes, we do. See, if Lord, take me out of this situation. See, we don't ask the Lord, Lord, while I'm in this situation, what are you trying to teach me? Lord, what is it that you want me to do, Lord, while I'm in the midst of it? All we want is for him to take us out of the storm. We don't want to learn the lesson from the storm. And watch this, because we have that type of attitude, we continually look at the storm. And because he, Peter, glanced at the storm, like so many of you and I, we do, we began to sink. That's my next point. He began to sink. Jesus said, come. See, now understand something. He wasn't merely granting permission for Peter to come. He was commanding Peter to come. Now, let's not miss this because, see, this is a picture of salvation. See, when our hope is stirred up 
and we come to the realization that it's Jesus who can save us, it's then that he commands us to come. And as we begin to walk towards him, we have to pass over the turbulent winds of life. See, you can't get to Jesus without going through some situations. You can't get to the promised land without going over some, 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 some storms, without dealing with some challenges. See, these winds, family, serve as a constant distraction to us, and, and if we're not careful, they can cause us to take our eyes off of Jesus and to place our eyes on the circumstances and the situations that are challenging us at the moment. And that's what Satan wants us to do. He wants us to take our eyes off of Jesus and focus on our circumstances. See, so often, family, we take our eyes off the Lord because of a troublesome supervisor. I know I'm not by myself. We take our eyes off of the Lord because of some crazy co-worker. Or we take our eyes off the Lord because of our marital difficulties or, or rude and judgmental folk. And some of them, whether you like it or not, whether you want to admit it or not, they're sitting right next to you or even looking at you from the pulpit. They, we, we, we take our eyes off of Jesus because of unfair situations and life's problems and the lesson here family is simple as it can be just keep your eyes on the Lord and you won't go under yeah yes look here yeah my rent due my mortgage due tell it but guess what as long as I keep my eyes on the Lord, he's going to work it out. I don't know how he's going to work it out. He may pay it. He may, he may just move on the heart of, of, of my landlord. I don't know. He may just move on the heart of my mortgage holder. I don't know. But however God works it out, I'm not going to worry about how. I'm just going to be satisfied and content with the fact that he's going to work it out. See, notice what the text says. The text says, when he saw the waves churning, when he saw the waves churning, in other words, finally, Peter became possessed with the problem of walking on the water, but in the midst of the wind and in the midst of the waves, the Bible says he failed. You see, Peter had his eyes on Jesus, and it was only when he took his eyes off of Jesus and glanced at the storm that he began to sink. And the Bible says that Peter almost drowned. That should have been good news for somebody. See, look here. Yes, Jesus, Peter did take his eyes off the Lord, but the text didn't say he drowned. The text said he almost drowned. I know some of you needed to hear that today because you do some of the things that you're going through, you're worried about how you're going to make it. You're worried about your family. You're worried about your finances. You're worried about your health. But can I share something with you? You may get down, but don't worry about it because you won't drown because according to the text, you will almost. But the Lord came through. Hello, somebody. And I want to emphasize this point clearly. And I want to make sure that I say it over and over again. As long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus and didn't concentrate on the problem, everything was all right. But as soon as he focused on the storm, he began to, to drown. See, Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and looked instead at the winds and, and the waves and he begins to sink. And as long as he looked to Jesus in faith, he was able to succeed in walking on the water. Ah, see, no, now, now, you, you, you may not be interested in walking on, on the water, but, but let me share something with you. If you're facing many of life's distractions today, like dealing with unemployment, like, like dealing with health issues, like dealing with broken relationships, like dealing with financial issues, like dealing with children that have gone astray, now is a time to look, now is a good time rather, to look beyond them and to look to Jesus Christ in faith and by faith walk over your problems walk on the water and because Peter began to sink because he because he focused on the wind and because he began to sink 
The text says, he cried, Lord, save me. You see, family, uh, in, in our way of thinking, we, we might wonder, what in the world was Peter thinking when, when, when he inquired to walk on the water? We may wonder why, why would he even say that? It, if, if, why did he even say, if it's really you, tell me to come across the water to you? Why did Peter do this? I, 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 I'm not going to lie. I wonder, why, what was his purpose? Why didn't he just say, Lord, save me? Why did he have to ask the Lord to walk on the water? What inspired him to want to leave the relative safety of the boat, even though the boat was rocking back and forth? What would make him want to get out in the ways with Jesus? What made him... And, and, and I believe that what made him believe the voice that said simply come. What in the world led him to believe that he could join Jesus when he knew very well that he was made of flesh and bones with absolutely no spiritual abilities whatsoever? What would make him ask the Lord to let him come walk on the water? Well, maybe you asked the same question as I did. And here's what I believe the answer is. See, when Peter heard the voice, the voice that first said, take heart, and then gently said, come. I believe that he knew without a shadow of a doubt to whom he was listening to. He had learned to know that voice. He might not trust his eyes because the waves were most likely splashing in his face, clouding up his vision, but he trusted his ears, and more importantly, he trusts his heart. You see, family, that was the voice of his Lord, and, and he knew it. He loved it, and he trusted it. And, and so when the voice said, come, the Bible says that Peter went. Well, family, let's think about this for a moment. Peter's the only disciple sure enough of Jesus' voice to speak to him in the storm. Peter is the only one bold enough to go out, to the, out of the boat to Jesus. Peter is the one humble enough to cry out for help when his own strength failed him. That's right, it takes humility to cry out to Jesus for help. Peter a man made of flesh and blood, just like you and I, begins to walk on the very surface of the water. How spectacular can that be? Well, actually, family, it's very spectacular. But let me share something with you. There are some people who love the Lord and trust him so much that they accomplish this very same task every day. Some of you saying, oh, wait a minute, Pastor. Some ain't right about that. Well, no, 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 no. Let me share something with you. They don't walk physically on the surface of the water, but spiritually, they pass over the turbulent waves of life. They are able to keep their eyes on the Lord always and not to give a glance to life's distractions that will inevitably drown them. However, here in the text, Peter has a momentary lapse of faith and all of a sudden he turns his attention away from Christ he becomes distracted by the storm around him he begins to sink and he cries out in complete desperation Lord save me well family did you know that there are many people around you today that are crying out these very same words. There may be someone sitting right next to you now, a coworker, a friend, a relative, crying out, Lord, save me. It may not be an audible cry, and you may not see it by, the, by looking at the expression in their faces, but they have a constant cry for the help of the Lord. They, that there's a time in almost everyone's life when, when their heart cries out to the Lord. 
When life's distractions manage to get the better of them and without the Lord, they just don't know what to do. And so as a result, family, they cry out to the Lord. And when Peter cried out, Lord, save me. The Bible says immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and he saved him. Yes, sir, that should be good news. That should be good news to you that are going through the storms of life. That should be good news of you who are having health challenges. That should be good news to you who are having unemployment issues. If you cry out to the Lord, immediately Jesus will stretch forth his hand and save you. Well, finally, there are times when life's distractions become so great that today they almost drown us. But when we remember to simply keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, when we remember that old spiritual woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus, when we, when we lean and we deeply and we depend solely on the Lord, this is when he comes to give us a new strength and fresh blessings. And that's when we can come to fully realize that he is for sure help in times of trouble. So family, I want to encourage you today. It doesn't matter what you're going through. If you just cry out to the Lord, take your eyes off your issues. Take your eyes off Satan because it ain't nothing but Satan. I don't care what the circumstances are. If they're not of God, then they are of Satan. And if, and if and Satan's job is to distract you from the Lord, Satan's job is to distract you from praising the Lord. Satan's job is to distract you from giving God all the glory. Satan's job is to drown you in your mess, in your circumstances. But know this today, just as Peter did, if you just cry out, without a shadow of a doubt, I know. How do you know, Pastor? Well, let me share something with you. As a young man caught up in the world, as a young man that didn't that played church, as a young man that did everything contrary to the word of God, going in and out of, of prison, going in and out of mess, one day I called on the Lord. I cried out to the Lord saying, Lord, save me. And the Lord, he convicted me. He showed me. He said, Charles, I died just so you might have a right to the tree of life. How did you die, Lord? Well, one Friday night, one Friday, I, I hung on an old rugged cross. One Friday after, one Friday, I, I, I gave my life just for you. I, they laid me in a borrowed tomb, and I stayed there all Friday night, all day Saturday, but early Sunday morning. I got up with all power in my hands just so I could save you from life's distractions. And just like he saved me, I want you to know today he could save you. Do you want to be saved today? Do you want to be saved from life's distractions? Do you, do you, do you, listen, I didn't say do you want to be rescued. I said do you want to be saved? It's just something different. Rescued means take out. Saved means you are being, you are having an ever-present help to endure while you are in. God is saying to you today, don't worry. I'm right here with you. I'm right here with you. Watch out for the distractions because they'll, they'll force you to take your eyes off of me. Put your eyes on the Lord and know this, that you too can walk on the water of life. May God bless you and may God keep you is our prayer. Will you bow with me? Father, we thank you once more and again, for another blessed opportunity to come and worship and praise your name.
I pray now in the name of Jesus, Father, that as only you can, that you would use your word to, to bless someone's heart, to bless them in their circumstances, to let them know, Father, that you are there, even in the midst of their storms. Now, Father, I pray as only I can that you touch those that still have yet to, to have a personal relationship with you. You move in their hearts, Father. Let them know that they are not by themselves. If they would just call on your name, you said, behold, I stand at the door knocking at your heart. All you have to do is open up and let me come in and sup with you. And Father, you said if they believe it, confess it, then they shall be saved, according to Romans 10 and 9. So Lord, we thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. And we praise you for what you're going to do. We love you. And we do praise your name. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Well, family, again, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us on today. I pray that you were, you were helped on today. May God bless you and may God keep you. And remember this, we love you and there's nothing that you can do about it. Be blessed.